Good afternoon. In this video, we're going to be revisiting a sensor that we covered a few weeks back, the LM35 temperature sensor. We're also going to be working with the Pi Moroni Pico display to display the temperature. Uh, to me, it's a good mashup of two of the different uh, devices that we've covered in providing a great application as a result of it. So before we go into the code and how it all works, let's first take a look at the device. Here on the bench, you can see I've got the code running on it right now. Uh, I've got the Pico display and the Pico on a little uh, backer board. Uh, this one's by Treedix, T-R-E-E-D-I-X dot com. Um, there are several varieties of these, but they're great for prototyping and doing things like this. Because frankly, when the Pico display is back-to-back -back with the Pico, it's hard to get access to the pins without pass-through headers. And that's covered in another video on how you do that. Uh, but I've got the LM35 here on a small breadboard. All it requires is three wires. We'll take a look at the fritzing diagram very quickly here. And you can see that, uh, in this case, we're running 3.3 uh, volts, uh, both on the breadboard and in the uh, diagram here. That goes into the left pin. This is the flat surface of the LM35, so that'll give you orientation. Ground comes through this pin, back through the ground rail, and then up to a ground connection point on the Pico. Our analog signal is coming in on channel 0, ADC0, and that goes to the center leg on the LM35. And we've got that all replicated here and, of course, here. And this, uh, these little backer boards are really handy for this type of uh, work. Now, uh, we'll watch it respond here. Um, Hopefully my fingers are warm enough to give it some uh, temperature change. We'll uh, call up the source code here too. Uh, get it running. Okay, give it a... Okay, I'll hold it. It should rise up. And it's continuing to rise. About every tenth of a second it's updating. Uh, we're at uh, about 74 degrees. Fahrenheit, of course, this is the United States. Um, but you'll see the display's got Fahrenheit on the right and centigrade on the left, or Celsius on the left. Um, I, I will admit, when we look at the code, the way I did, it's kind of a kludge, but it works. And uh, all we're trying to do is give a graphic scale to represent temperature. And, of course, our faithful... Uh, LM35, without touching it, the temperature is dropping back down. So there's really two functions to this program. One is the analog side to interpret data from the LM35, which we've covered in another video. So I'm just going to really just gloss over that uh, completely. Um, but then on the Pico side, uh, I'm going to go show you how I went about uh, structuring the program and creating the graphics for it. Uh, it's using uh, the Pi Moroni uh, uh, Pico V1.19 uh, UF2 file. I've got a note in the source code here, if you take a look, and that is uh, something you have to download and install, otherwise you won't have the libraries necessary to do the graphics. Um, so you will need to get that and install that, just as you would any other UF2 file. Um, if you want documentation for reference on the Pico, Pico Graphics Library that was provided in that UF2 file, you can find information about it uh, right here in uh, this uh, link uh, to Pi Moroni's GitHub uh, covering that feature or that item. Uh, I'm mentioning right in the comments, I, I don't really try to hide it. Uh, uh, the scale to handle Celsius is a bit of a kludge, but it works. Keep in mind this is a mashup of two separate demonstration programs. Uh, we're going to start out, we need to import a couple of libraries. Time, uh, the Pi Moroni uh, uh, button library. I'm actually not even using that, so we could have left the button out. 
Um, Pico graphics, which is very important. Uh, we need uh, to import that. And then uh, the display, Pico display, and pen uh, underscore P4. We're not technically using all of this, but it's just good practice to get in the habit of including all this because generally you will use all that data or all those libraries. So the first thing we'll do uh, is configure uh, the display variables and functions that are used to display data. We're only using a few colors, so we're setting our, uh, our pen type to P4 and uh, using uh, the display called Display Pico Display. I'm rotating it 270 degrees so that it's vertical in this orientation. Uh, that will yield us 135 pixels wide by a 240 pixel tall display. We're going to turn on the backlight so that it's bright. Uh, if you set that to 5, uh, at, at 0.5, it's pretty dim. Uh, so I generally have been using the display at full brightness, and it's very attractive looking in my opinion. We're going to select a font for any text that we use. Uh, you'll have a listing of those available to you in the PyMaroni documentation. We'll define some basic RGB colors that we can use for our little display. And these are just uh, uh, 0 to 55 values of red, green, blue, and you would mix and choose those. There are uh, some paint programs that if you have a color, you can ask it what color uh, combination or what combination of RGB you use to get that color. I think Windows Paint might be one of those things that can help you with that. Otherwise, just kind of poke around with it until you like the looks of it. We're going to define uh, some expositions uh, for, the thermo for the thermometer. Um, the center of the thermometer, the left edge of the outline, the left edge of the red part of the stem. If you look at it closely, and you may not even be able to see it on camera, uh, the thermometer has an outline all the way around it, and then there's white in the background, and then red within that boundary that is the uh, simulating the mercury in a, in a thermometer. Uh, so that's in part what's being defined uh, with these variables here. Uh, we're going to have a function. Uh, this is a pretty common function that you use with Pico Graphics a lot. You'll create it. Uh, you call it clear. What you'll do is you'll set your pen color to whatever background color you're using, in this case black. You call the display clear, which just paints the whole thing black. And then you have to always call an update uh, for the display to reflect those changes you've just programmed into it. Now we've got a function that's just going to draw our basic uh, thermometer shape. And that consists of a couple of circles down at the bulb. Uh, in order to draw, we're going to have, going to select a pen. So display.setPen uh, gray uh, is the color I'm using for the outline. And uh, we'll draw that circle at this X position, this Y position, and with a radius of that many pixels. Then we'll set uh, the color to red. We'll draw at that same location, but a smaller radius, which would represent the round uh, area, the bulb of the thermometer, and the red, of course, would be the mercury. Uh, we're going to switch to gray and draw the stem, so we'll create a, ring, a rectangle at this X location, this Y location, with this width and that height. And then we'll change the color to white, draw another rectangle at this X, this Y, at this width, at that height. You notice it's a little bit smaller. And then finally, we will uh, set the pen to red again. Red for the mercury, draw a rectangle at this X, this Y, this width, and that height. And that's just the very bottom of the bulb there. Or not the bulb, but uh, the bottom of the stem where it meets up with the bulb. Uh, all around is just basic graphic drawing with X, Y Cartesian coordinates. Uh, the most complex part of this is uh, this area, and that's why I kind of called it a kludge. 
it was all written in Fahrenheit, and then I had to add in uh, the Celsius scale so I could be kind and appreciative of my uh, viewers from the rest of the world. Um, we're just going to start out again by uh, defining some variables for locations, uh, where text will be and where it'll start printing from. Uh, we're going to have, uh, uh, we'll call it our starting uh, values at the base of, for the marks and for the temperature. Uh, those are defining, again, positions for something. Then we're going to go through uh, the a loop here, a while loop. Um, from T mark, uh, which is at 190 and up to 6, uh, and that'll make sense in a minute. We're going from bottom up, and uh, the top of the screen is 0. The bottom of the screen is uh, your max resolution, which, going by memory here, was 240 pixels. So that's why that seems kind of odd. We're going from big to small. Uh, we're going to set the pen to cyan. That kind of is a clue. We're on the right-hand side or the, the correct side for temperature, the Fahrenheit side. Uh, we will draw a line by specifying uh, the left edge of it, the Y position of it, the right edge, and the Y position at the right edge. And that's how all it takes to draw a line. And those would be the horizontal tick lines going up on our scale. Uh, then we're going to give it a text uh, by converting a temp. Uh, temp meaning temperature, starting at 60 degrees. And uh, we'll put that into a string, convert it to a string with str. And then we're going to display that text at this x location, at that y location. Um, and then we're going to, uh, I'm sorry, we would, this is the text, X location, Y location, and then we're going to specify the size or the scale of the text. Uh, in there, you've got a little variability to control your font size. As always, update your display, and then we're going to increment our counters to go through and draw all the Fahrenheit degrees, uh, on the, uh, uh, on the Fahrenheit side, we're going to print the letter F in the lower right area, right down here, so that you know that that's Fahrenheit scale and not Celsius. We wouldn't want anybody to get confused. And then we repeat the exact same process on the left side in a white color. And uh, we do a little bit of scaling in here, which you'll see on these few lines here, doing uh, basic conversions between uh, Fahrenheit and Celsius. And then, of course, we got to factor in uh, positional data. Uh, and then uh, we update the, the letter C, or put a letter C down in the lower left-hand corner. And with that, we've got uh, the actual thermometer drawn and everything about it drawn. And then this routine we'll come back to in a minute. We'll talk about that um, further down here uh, once we call it from the main program. Uh, up here, we're going to uh, create our LM3580C uh, object and uh, give it an offset. Uh, this is explained in the other video. Uh, some basic calculations uh, to calculate the temperature in Celsius and Fahrenheit, and that would be returned back to the main program. The main program will start out by clearing the screen, uh, drawing the base thermometer, and showing the temp ticks, which we've just discussed, those three functions. We're going to run uh, our measurements in samples of 10. That way you get an averaging uh, rather than individual uh, values. And that gives you a little more precision out of the device because it does float up and down ever so slightly. Uh, and so we'll need uh, samples to hold all of our samples, and then a number of samples to allow us to count up to 10 samples. Uh, we'll jump into our endless loop, and the first uh, decision is if the number of samples is less than 10, we need to take a reading from the device, the uh, LM35, and then we'll add that reading to our samples variable and increment the number of samples up one more. Uh, if that uh, truth statement here failed, then we're down to our else decision. 
We're going to take our average of samples, divide that by 10, set our samples back to zero, number of samples back to one, and then we're going to do our computation for the temperature. And that is this routine right here, which again is covered in detail in the other uh, video on uh, the LM35. And here we're just printing the temperature in Fahrenheit, which we see down here, and then we call show temp temperature Fahrenheit. And that is this routine here, where we set some positions for uh, where we want things to be placed. Uh, a couple notes to myself, top of white is Y position uh, 10, bottom of red is Y position 190. Uh, we need to make sure that it, our degrees in Fahrenheit is adjusted for our scale of only showing 20 to 80, so we're reducing it to a range of 0 to 20. Uh, we'll convert that into pixels of temperature from the base, the base being the very top edge of the bulb or the bottom of the stem. Uh, we define those two locations here, and then we make a slight adjustment uh, for our temperature with this variable. Finally, uh, the height of the white area, which is above the mercury, and then the height of the red area, which is showing the temperature from the bulb up to the temperature line. A couple more calculations. We'll set our pen to white, draw the rectangle at the top of the thermometer to erase any red that's up there, and then we'll switch to our red pen, draw a rectangle representing the mercury at the lower part of the thermometer, and then update the display. It's a lot to cover, um, but the graphics, as you can see, these um, graphic uh, commands and functions are very rudimentary and very common with graphic programming languages. So it's not that hard to learn how to program and get uh, your display to look like the way you want it to. And then this whole routine just keeps repeating over and over again. And as you saw, if we make it heat up, We'll see the temperature rising very rapidly, and it responds nicely. That's a long-winded explanation of how to combine together the LM35 and a Pico and a Pico display to get a very attractive, albeit very compact, thermometer. Uh, that'll pretty well wrap it up for this video. I would like to refer you back to uh, the LM35 video where we introduced that and explain how that operates. And then uh, there is another video on the Pico display, uh, probably two of them by this time. One will be an introduction to it, and then the other will be explaining uh, more of the graphic uh, programming aspects of it. That's going to wrap it up. Thanks for watching, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.